uh, spread again, uh, making a new video. Laura's here giving me a hand. Um, what we have here is a Door County limestone fireplace that uh, is all in veneer. It's a, it's a zero clearance unit. There's no masonry within here. It's all metal. And it vents out the back um, through the wall. Um, but we call this a zero clearance. And usually uh, masons will put a thin veneer on these types of things. What this consists of mainly is a Door County flagstone edge, which has been cut off the stone uh, anywhere from three quarters to about an inch and a half thick because I want to vary the, uh, the depth of the stone so it, it had a little bit more detail to it. And I'm sure you've noticed um, these are much different. This is a same type of stone, but what it is is a dressed limestone. And I start out with a large Door County limestone and I dress it into corners, which are applied here. And then once I have the chisel work done, I take this onto a 14 inch brick saw and I gut it out so it's thin. And it cuts way down on the weight. You do not need footings. And then um, you can make an installation like this with, with just right on the, on the floor trusses and it, it's not going to overwhelm the framing. Um, it's, I would have uh, liked to have shown uh, you folks more, but the website wasn't uh, something uh, that was active at the time when I started this. I've just been kind of putzing with this over the last six months. Uh, I use it to kind of fill in in between jobs and whatnot. But what we have here, as far as the backing, see, I may not have any around, but what it is is an extruded diamond mesh behind here on framing with a dry parging on here. I, most of the time I like to do the parging while I lay the stone, and uh, it, it creates a very nice uh, mechanical joint into the diamond mesh. Uh, but with this situation, I found that the, uh, the longer stones here, these guys, um, I was laying in winter and trying to do the wet method, and they just kept sagging and, and coming off. So um, I parged it in the winter, and I let it go. And now that it's summer and the, the temperature's up, I'm able to um, apply this stuff very nicely, and it, it knits to the parging very quickly and I don't have to stand here and play with the stones. Um, now this stuff is going to be jointed eventually. It's not now and I've left oh, approximately a quarter inch joint on all this stuff. But now this field, which is the same on the sides here, um, this is all dry laid um, stacked. I'm trying to get it pretty tight so you can't see what's behind it. Uh, so uh, there's not going to be a joint in there. And I, what I'm doing, I'm butting everything very tightly and I'm trying to just keep the visual of this parging to not really come through that much because the joints are relatively tight here. Um, and to finish this video up, uh, you know, I'll go over the, the chiseling and the cutting of this at some later time when I have a, a project like this to do again uh, to show you folks that can visit the website. Uh, now, what I do is I apply a nice uh, bed of uh, mortar onto the back here where I cut it. And I put that in, uh, knit very well with my trowel, and then I'll take it and then I'll apply it to here. And we'll see if I can get one that doesn't take a ton of cutting here, because the saw is awfully loud. I don't want to turn it on during the video. But we'll see if we can get an application here. And there's a little bit of a flare in that area. So I'm going to be looking for a stone that has a slight flare so that my beds will remain level. Because when you lose the spacing on this type of work, it's really hard to get it back and to make it look proper. And you don't want to do things like this, you know, and my old bosses call them wheelie stones, wheelie bricks. And they're absolutely unappealing when you have that type of thing at work. So this guy here has a very nice flare. It butts well, 
and I think we're just going to go with that raw. I don't need to cut this guy. He's just perfect right from God's hand. So here's what we'll do. Got my board over here. When you come back now, I take a little bit of mortar, which is probably a little much. And there's a stone in there, so we'll get rid of that. And I just take this and I wipe this up the stone like so, and I make sure that that knits into the stone very nicely. Maybe that was a little too little. I'll go a little bit more. I want to have a decent joint behind that stone. And the dry uh, parging really takes the moisture off of it very quickly, so it makes installation a snap. And of course, I do have some support underneath the stone stones that I've already laid. Uh, so I run my finger along there, help the suction, it seems to help a little bit, and then I don't have that real dried mortar um, interfering with what's coming next. So I make sure I clean that up right away. We don't have anything here. So, and then voila, it just grabs like nobody's business and I can move on. So that's a little bit about uh, the Hay Property uh, Stone Fireplace. This is a historical property in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. I've been working on for about five years. Uh, there are a massive amount of work here. Lots of uh, brick was relayed. Uh, put new circle driveway in. We did a large drainage project. We fixed footings here. And it seems to be growing. Then the man bought another house and we're doing retaining walls and braid beams and sewer laterals and water laterals. It's just been a summer. Uh, work just keeps coming. It just doesn't seem to end. But anyhow, thanks folks for watching. Have a good one. This is Brett Potter, over and out.